No fancy introduction for these videos. It's the Steam Summer Sale, and people have asked me what games to recommend. So I'm going to split this into a couple of videos based on the general genre. Now note, I'm focusing on games that are on sale that you may not have seen before, or games that are on their biggest sales in their lifetime using Cheap Shark. So for this video, I'll be focusing on roguelikes and RPGs to possibly pick up this Steam Summer Sale of 2018. While it may not be your typical Torchlight or Diablo experience, Victor Vaughn was a fresh shot of adrenaline into this genre. For 75% off at the price of $4.99, you get an RPG that focuses on weaponry-based simple skills, but a reasonable set of combat options and customization. The difficulty on hard is exactly what I want, where even small groups can be a challenge, but not overly oppressive. You can get really creative in your loadouts to deal with the massive bosses and take advantage of the weapons that actually do more than different damages and speed, but actually wield different swings and arcs and ranges. It also helps that the game has really good side quests in the area, forcing you to play differently. The game emphasizes variety in my opinion, and granted, I know that some people won't necessarily like that, but I loved every moment of it. Everything about this game is a bit different from the genre norms, but that's why it's perfect to pick up during the sale and at least try out. It's something different, and you may find yourself exposed to more action type RPGs like this in the process. If for some reason you haven't picked up Crypt of the Netbro Dancer by this point, I really have no idea what you're thinking. But if picking up the game at 80% off for $2.99 doesn't entice you now, nothing will. It's a really unique gem in the genre, moving to the beat while making snap decisions about how to damage your enemy without taking damage yourself, and it's fantastic. There's a great amount of variety with the different weapons and items present, whether you want to focus on ranged attacks or being very cautious with close range firepower. It also helps here that the soundtrack that you're playing to is fantastic, becoming mesmerizingly addictive in a short period of time. The game has a ton of replay value, with the mods added to the game and the ability to import songs, with those songs actually importing rather well song-wise, except those really, really out of the world crazy ones. Look, I could go on and on about how Crypt of the Necrodancer is one of the best in the genre, but here's the thing, if I want to infect someone with the roguelike bug, I start with the Crypt of the Necrodancer. And that should say everything you need to know. Moving on, sadly one of the downsides of the rise of the roguelike top-down shooters such as Enter the Gungeon is simple. There is a ton of good ones out there right now. Neon Chrome, for example, which you can pick up at 70% off for $4.49, is one that got caught in the shadows because of it. But don't overlook this little gem by the creators of Crimson Land. Getting free updates even as we speak, I won't mince words here. I love the game's destructive environments, which open up tons of unique strategies and are just fun to blow the shit out of. In addition, the game focuses less on dodging and movement, and more on precise aiming, which is actually a lot less common in the genre than you would think. You feel the stress when reinforcements come, as they make a true difference, and you'll do that with a fun set of weapons that you'll be swapping out constantly with the loot available. It may not be the most visually stunning game, but when the game has this much replayability value, you won't care. It's all about bang for buck here, and Neon Chrome will blind you with the amount of hours you will get from it. Next up, it's actually an interesting dilemma regarding Japanese RPGs and Steam, specifically the Steam sale. They've only been coming on to Steam a good amount in the last several years, and a lot of them actually don't have significant discounts. However, I ended up covering one off the beaten path in Conception 2, Children of the Seven Stars which you could pick up at a 60% discount for 
The game does take a while to get going from a combat perspective, but when it does, you've got a bit of interesting options and difficulties to deal with. The combat having a unique positional element helps in adding more strategy elements to the game along with the skills being used here. It also does help that each of the waifus that you have to connect with grow their unique storylines but their skill sets in battle as well. I consider Conception 2 a knockoff Persona game, but instead of Personas, you use the energy of your fake children to grow. Yeah, I know, this game's story may be a little weird when you first read about it, but give it a chance, because despite the fact that I just called it a Persona knockoff, it is its own unique game, and while not on Persona 5's level, it does come in around the mid-level in terms of RPGs. Definitely worth playing, and definitely worth getting at a discount. Next up, on my list of the top gameplay games of 2017, Cryptdark is 75% off right now for 374. And I know that some people were a little bit hesitant to buy it at full price because I said that yeah, you didn't get necessarily 40 hours out of it. However, the sheer different amount of options of weaponry and strategy available here is fantastic. You can go slow and steady with melee attacks and play really defensively, or you can go full frantic assault, launching missiles and lasers left and right. It's really fun to plan out how you're going to make your way to the core of the decrepit ship, as each of the different defense systems have different ways to get through them, and you'll have to deal with a variety of different challenges. The extra money mechanic and incentives with the restrictions on things like limited HP or only having a mech of certain cost pushes the difficulty even further and is a nice touch for some variety in the game. It all comes together with some solid controls, some nice presentation elements here and there, and a fun extra mode here and there as well. I understand that the game did reasonably well, but the thing is, it didn't do well enough in my opinion. It was one of those rare early access gems that got early access right. It was polished when it went into early access and they just added more and more while taking people's feedback. Cryptark is the kind of game I want to see from an indie developer. A twist on the formula and a nice twist at that. Next up, another overlooked gem in the action RPG genre. Mix a little of your favorite game show with a basic action RPG with a card type mechanic for your equipable skills and you've got for showdown which can be gotten for 70% off for $5.99. You play through a variety of enemies and bosses with a couple of different heroes all with unique styles. That good enemy variety from the get go helps things get going and there's a good randomization of the layouts as well as the fights that you're going to be put into. Force Showdown in the end for me was a game all about fun. The difficulty curve is there, but it also isn't overbearing. It allows you to experiment with the different effects rather creatively to make interesting builds for each unique run. Now I know there's comparisons to Smash TV, and it may be a real stretch as it really only fits in name and general concept, but you'll find yourself wanting to play Force Showdown more and more as the game goes on very similar to Smash TV. Hard to put down when you get going, so if you want to pick up a bit of fun and a little bit of quirkiness, Force Showdown is right for you. Next up, you probably weren't expecting a Solitaire game on this list, huh? Well, Solitaricia, which I probably mispronounced, may be basic in its roguelike mechanics, but that doesn't stop me recommending it at a discount of 75% off for $249. What Solitaricia is, is simple. It's addicting. The game smartly uses the skill to take out some of the randomization problems in the Spider Solitaire format, while not feeling overly powerful and making the game a breeze to walk through. Forcing class-based decks based on certain attributes helps you deal with certain challenges or to mix up things here and there. And it's a nice game to look at in its colorful yet not over-the-top style. This is a laid-back roguelite, the one where you want something to play, want a small challenge, but you don't want to have your head handed back to you on a platter. 
and it's a game you will be playing repeatedly over time. I know that when I did the review for the game, I ended up pushing myself past the amount of time that I really wanted to spend on it because I was enjoying myself that much. That should say something. Finally, let's end with a game that is seemingly flawed but still fun to play regardless. Overfall. You can pick it up for 67% off for $4.94. Now I say flawed despite the fact that the story and the scenarios in the game are quite entertaining. And something about the art style does give it a unique impression even though it may not be necessarily the most quality of work. There's an okay mix of skills here and unlockables, with abilities that some say get repetitive, but given the hex matrix, they end up playing a bit differently from character to character in battle. The problem with the game is simple, you sorta really need to play it on easy to really enjoy it. The normal difficulty can throw you into non-winnable situations, and can feel like you're bashing your head against the wall over and over again, and not in a good way. It really needed a bit more balance in the end after it came out of early access. But I couldn't want to help to play it more when I was taking a look at it, and despite the frustrations, it still succeeded. I do want a little bit more roguelike elements in it in the end, but if you want something different in the genre, Overfall may be your cup of tea, and it's the perfect time to try it during this Steam Summer Sale. Anyway, that's it for this video. Coming up next will be my story recommendations. I will try to do more than the story recommendations and try to do maybe another video or two in terms of the Steam Summer Sales, but considering everything that's going on in my life, aka there's a lot of work that I'm working on, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to promise that, but I will get you the story one. Anyway, I'll see you later, and as always, keep on gaming.